Hey guys, um, I'm Instructor Worth and I've been your uh, professor for this whole semester. Finally, you guys get to see what I look face to face kind of thing, although I won't see you guys other than your picture on Canvas. I wanted to discuss a little bit about my particular expertise within anthropology, so I brought a few little things to uh, help me with my talking. Uh, so my particular area of expertise is bioarchaeology and forensic anthropology. So I deal with the human skeleton a lot, whether that's excavating or looking at those things in the lab. Uh, so I do have a lot of expertise within human osteology, which is, uh, so osteology is the study of the skeleton. So I've had to go through quite a bit of courses and um, training to, I guess, be considered an expert in that uh, so that I can teach that as well. Uh, so this is one of the things that helped me get through that. It's a skull that breaks into multiple different pieces, all of the various pieces. Um, so you have the mandible, you can take the maxil off and kind of break it up into different pieces so that you can truly understand exactly how the uh, skull works, all of the various bones within the skull and it's pretty crazy to know that, uh, to be able to understand all of that and see how small they are. And then once you see how small some of them are, like the auditory ossicles are like maybe, uh, probably a little bit smaller than that. And sometimes we we'll even excavate those out of the ground. Um, so particularly, um, within bioarchaeology, I've been on a couple, um, various projects, uh, particularly one it, that I, included a link for this week is the Drosco Foundation. And so the Drosco Foundation, I went out to Poland as an undergraduate and I helped on an excavation with that particular uh, project. And so we were dealing with what we call deviant burials. And so the reason they're called deviant burials or vampire burials is because they're buried in a certain way with either sickle across their throat, across their waist, or stones in their mouth or like on their chest. Um, and so basically, if you don't know what a sickle is, think of the Grim Reaper, the thing that he holds. He used they, they use that, farmers use that to like cut wheat and different things. Um, and so I particularly assisted on a total of about 20 excavations there, 20 burials, but I, was, along with my partner, excavated three. We excavated one that was uh, an adult female, age 36 to 42. We used the um, pelvis to determine that particularly, the pubic symphysis right here. And uh, that one was pretty cool uh, because it was pretty well uh, preserved. Uh, but one of my buddies who's from Texas, he when he was using the shovel, he took this whole front of the skull off. And so my uh, partner and I, Natalia, we excavated for about two hours. We cleaned about for, two, two, for about two hours around the skull so that it would look nice for the picture. And then right when we picked it up, it just broke into a thousand pieces, which, you know, was a little heartbreaking. But, you know, you get, you get by that and you get used to that um, when you're dealing with about 500-year-old skeletons that are seeing air for the first time in 500 years. Um, and so, also, I excavated an infant, which is pretty interesting because the coffin itself uh, preserved better than the bones itself. And then the coolest one uh, was a, um, it's basically, it was a disturbed burial. So it was a three to five year old, a young child, and so after they were buried in the ground, they were dug up in the process to bury someone else. And then they were just kind of thrown into like a little bone pit. And so if you imagine, it's probably about that big around. That was the whole area in which the, bone, uh, the remains were found. And so that one had the best preservation. And so when I was talking about the auditory ossicles, those are the bones in the ear. You have incostapius malleus, three in each ear. Um, so if you're thinking they're about that big, and we recovered five out of the six. It was pretty cool. So after we would excavate each of the burials, we would go to the lab, clean them off, everything like that. Now, the Drosco Foundation would be pretty cool if you guys had the chance to do that once you guys 
um, transfer to the university if you're still interested in anthropology or if you're majoring in anthropology, although I know m many of you aren't. Um, if you decide to major in anthropology, you can get, I believe, six college credits for going to this over the summer, and it's about a month-long intensive course. Really cool. Um, so bioarchaeology in itself is dealing with understanding humans in the past. So this can be from a few generations ago. This could be thousands of years, as long as our species has been alive. And so they do a lot of really cool work and they help us understand why we've evolved, how we've evolved and how our civilizations have grown as well. And so that's kind of why I do it. Um, I've also worked with a lot of Native American remains, particularly Native Californian remains in the San Francisco Bay Area. I included the uh, Ryan Mound presentation, which describes a little bit about that. And it's pretty cool because this Ryan Mound itself, it's not a huge mound. Like you think of a huge mound be probably like a few football fields wide, right? But this thing is uh, about 18 feet tall or so and no bigger than about two football fields. And there's still, although we've excavated, I personally didn't excavate, but um, I helped with some of the analysis on the bones. Uh, there were over 400 excavated, and all but 200 have been repatriated, meaning they've been put back in the ground. Um, the reason why the other 200 haven't been repatriated is because the tribe is still fighting for federal recognition. So they, they are completely up for the, um, the analysis on their ancestors' remains. And they're even allowing destructive analysis, which is like gathering DNA and uh, doing dating on uh, isotope analysis, things like that. It's pretty cool. Um, and so they allow this so that they can then in the end one day become a federally recognized tribe, which I think they ha should be because, I mean, they've been in the San Francisco Bay Area for about 2,000 years at least. So, I mean, they were living there a long time before the Spanish came along, but um, it's kind of how federally recognized tribes have to fight for things. I mean, just tribes in general, they, even the federally recognized ones still struggle day in and day out. Um, so uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure as you guys can tell, I'm a bit of a rambler. Uh, I talk about a lot of different things. Um, so that particular mound, the really cool thing about it is they estimate that there's still at least a thousand individuals buried there. And one really cool thing about this site is it shows one of the highest rates of violence within any given Native American tribe or burial, um, cemetery per se. So their rates include anything from interpersonal violence, something as easy as like punching someone in the face, you break their nose, um, to having arrow points sticking out of their shoulder, sticking out of their forehead, things like that. Um, it gets pretty crazy, uh, but it's really cool because it helps us understand this battle or dis, uh, this debate whether violence is a part of human nature or it's something that's learned by society. Um, that's something you guys may discuss late, at a later date. Um, so I don't want to take too long on the video. I want to maybe, maybe make it about 10 minutes uh, in total. So I'll try and wrap up now. So forensic anthropology it is basically the utilization of anthropology, osteology, understanding the bones, things like that to help us solve cases. And it's really important. Um, one of my mentors is one of, she's very well known in the San Francisco Bay Area. Her name's Dr. Lorna Pierce. And I helped her with, not with cases, but with teaching other people about forensic anthropology. So it's something that is very fascinating to me and um, hopefully is maybe fascinating to you. If it's not, not going to hurt my feelings. Um, but yeah, so just to kind of wrap up, bioarchaeology and forensic anthropology, that's my areas of expertise, although I do have formal training in all of the subfields of anthropology. So that's why I'm able to teach various uh, subfields. In the next semester, I'll be teaching the um, natives of the Americas. Um, but yeah, so if you guys have any questions about this video or anything, just add it into the discussion and I will reply as soon as possible. Cool. Thank you.